Welcome to Managing Your Workflow Using a Bunch of Tools we're going to look at this afternoon. My name is Dante St. James. I'm coming to you from a rather humid Alice Springs in the middle of Australia today. Uh, it's been a bit of a challenge to try and deal with not just heat, but humidity as well. Although coming from Darwin, it should be something I'm used to. We're going to be taking a very live look inside some of those systems we mentioned in the brief for this particular webinar. We're going to take a look inside Trello. We're going to look inside Asana. We're going to take a look inside ClickUp and also a look inside Monday.com. They're four of the biggest ones around. And so we're going to take a look at what they're like under the hood and how they might be appropriate for your particular kind of business. I do apologize in advance if we do have some internet problems. I'm working off our mobile hotspots at the moment, but so far, so good. We're looking good to be having a great time. Now, only these course, only these um, particular products you can have a free trial with. They're all open for tree free trials. And we'll be talking about that a little bit later on as well as looking at what some of the price options could be for you as well. Some of them though, are absolutely free to get started on, which is always a good thing to start with. What I do is share my screen now and we'll be able to get right underway. This particular program is brought to you by Business Station and the Australian Small Business Advisory Services Digital Solutions Program in conjunction with Regional Development Australia Brisbane in Queensland and Treaty Business Consulting in the Northern Territory. Uh, we will be, um, as you, you know, part of this particular webinar, you're part of the program. So we welcome you on board and really invite you to take advantage of the one-to-one -one consultations you can have with um, all kinds of specialists in different things. We've got um, a bit of a, a specialist actually in Queensland called Crystal, Crystal Divity, who is um, a real specialist in this particular realm. So if you want help with um, Asana, ClickUp or any of these CRM style or workflow management systems, she's really, really good at them. A quote here from Henry Ford is that you can't build a reputation on what you are going to do. You can just build it on what you've done. And that's what we're talking about is going from that, I'm going to do it to that I'm going to do it and I'm going to do it now and get it done. That's the kind of thing that these particular workflow management tools will help you out with. We will be recording this and it'll be available through Business Station's YouTube channel and my own one as well. But uh, primarily look for it on Business Station's YouTube channel and you can watch this again later on if there's anything that you miss along the way. The systems again that we'll cover are Trello, Asana, ClickUp and Monday.com. Now, this is by no means a deep dive into each system because I've only got an hour to work with. So what we'll do is take a bit of a brief overview of what each of those are and maybe some suggestions of those uh, that you may feel that work best for you. Um, also, feel free to jump in with questions on the uh, the chat and on the q and excuse me, on the Q&A, I can see them if they pop up on the screen. I've just got the one screen I'm working with. So a little bit more limited than I normally would be, but I reckon we'll be able to cope with it and move on. So uh, a little bit about me, if you haven't come across me before, I've got my education through Western Sydney University, University of New South Wales, Chartered Institute of Marketing, TAFE New South Wales, done a lot of pieces of paper and I've worked a lot with Facebook's programs through Boost with Facebook Australia as one of their um, seven certified trainers in Australia and New Zealand. I've also got Google Digital Springboard um, a training partnership and I do a lot of work with a government programs such as ASBAS Digital Solutions which is this, um, the Be Connected program and the NICE program, the New Enterprise Incentive Scheme. Let's get underway. I'm just going to uh, stop the share of this particular one and we're going to go into some of these systems that we're going to take a look at. So the first cab off the rank is going to be this one. It's going to log into my account via my Google login to what is called Trello. Now Trello, I've just got to create my account first. Um, Trello is a workflow management system that's now owned by a company called Atlassian. Atlassian is um, an Australian company that started in Sydney and is now uh, probably the biggest tech company in Australia that's Australian owned. Together with Canva, they form the power two of the two big tech companies that were formed here. So what I'm doing is setting up my account with Atlassian and Trello using my Google or Gmail login. Now, what I want to do when I first come in here is sort of name what it is I'm going to do. So for the sake of what I'm going to do just today, I'm going to create a thing called uh, Dante's Angels. It's going to call my uh, little team uh, for my digital marketing agency. I'm going to choose my team type, which is, is it all of these? I'm going to say they're marketing people. And then I can invite my team in there using their email addresses as well. Now, there is no cost to use Trello at this level, even with those additional people bringing into it. I'm just going to skip that bit for now and go straight into just being on my own in Trello. 
Now, the first thing you need to do is choose what kind of account you're going to have. In this case, I'm just going to go the free one, which gives me up to 10 team boards, one power up per board, which is sort of um, additional features and some very limited automation. So for instance, if you want to go, um, when something moves to this particular um, part of my board, automatically send an email to do this thing. Um, as you can see, Trello is heavily used by very big companies and you've got like your standard teams and your exclusive offers, which they've got here for $9.95 US a month. Um, and it's used by people like Pinterest, Google, Fortnite and Peloton. These are very big companies who use Trello in amazing ways to, I guess, organize their teams and the work that those teams do because it's very easy for someone to onboard themselves with this. I'm just going to go the free one for now um, and just start my 33. I'll, I'll start a trial anyway. It's giving me a trial. I just don't want to do that. I'm also not going to fill in my details here right now. Um, I might just quickly unshare my screen as I fill that out just so you don't see my credit card number, which I'll be removing directly after this is over anyway. Might be a sec. Where do I live? I live in Australia. What's my postcode? So this is the unfortunate things that they do need to quite often um, uh, use things like your, uh, your, your, your login has uh, got to come with a credit card, uh, not a payment, but you've got to put your credit card number in so they can charge you when the trial is over. So the key is with these ones, you can start without business class, which I'm just going to do now to get us going a bit quicker. Let's reshare that screen and get going again. Last time I was on here, mind you, I did not have to enter a credit card and it looks like I just found the way around it. All right, so it'll give you a starting up guide, which will give you the option to be able to get Trello going. I'm just gonna get rid of that and start from scratch in a much more sort of natural way for me. They've got a bunch of templates that they're going to start off with you. So you've got a way to go, oh yeah, here's my templates. Here's something I can start to work with straight away. But what I'm going to do is the most basic of all of the kinds of ones you could do with this. Like so basic that it's going to be a case of to do, doing and done, which I think is a perfect way to run a board like this. So I'm gonna create my new board. I'm gonna call it, um, team workflow and I'm going to give it a color or a picture of the background. Let's just give it a little bit of green because green's pretty. It's going to create my board or I can start with a template. I'm just going to start with a very blank board and it opens up this board. Now what it's done is created the three primary things that we're going to do in something with Trello, which is to do, doing and done. How this works is I'll type in the to do bit where I'd go um, call Marika about her website design being ready. Once I hit enter, that now becomes a task. Now I can do lots of things with that task. I can edit the labels. If I've got labels, if I wanna give it a priority, say this is urgent to do, it's got a little red bar on there that can be like an indicator to me that that is an urgent thing that needs to be looked at. Or I could edit that and change the cover of it. So it's got a cover on it. I can put like a little thing on there that makes it look like it's taking up a lot more room and will take my attention. I can also put my own image on there. So I want to put a photo of Marika on there, or if I want to put something else that indicates the work I'm doing for her, I can do that. Or if I want to use a cover as a way of making the priority look really important, I can put that red in that cover and see it's got to put a red line across the top now, which is a lot more noticeable than just this little red dash. The red dashes I used to use quite a lot, but these covers really stand out and are gonna make it much easier for you to spot the things that are high priority. I'm gonna then add another task to my to-do. Let's just say, pick up uh, washing from the dry cleaner. Now that one I'm not gonna put as a particularly high priority because let's face it, it's not mission critical. It's just important to maybe me. So I'm gonna change the cover of that one to a green because not really that important and save it and it goes. Another card, let's create one for um, start the planning for ABC's social media campaign. And that's fairly important, but not as urgent as this call I need to make to Marika later. So I'm gonna give that maybe a yellow cover so I can easily see what is a high priority using say a traffic light system like in my red, greens and yellows. Now at some point, Marika 
becomes ready to do. So what I'm gonna do is, because this is open for my whole team to now see, I can allocate myself as the owner of this by allocating members. So I've got myself, I'm gonna allocate myself, that's my little logo there, as the owner of this particular, but I can add others as well. If it doesn't have an owner, that tells me that nobody's working on this. Now I know I'm working on it, I'm gonna drag, pick up and drag this along to the doing column. Now inside this card, as I'm working about on it, I'm gonna take some notes. So I've opened up the card and I've got a lot more information I can work with. The first bit of information I wanna do is go, the things I need to talk to Marika about are in a checklist. So I'm gonna to go topics. And in those topics, item one is, um, what is the logo? Now, item two is, what are the colors of the brand? Item three is, is there a brand guideline document? Um, have they got a website already? Um, say, what is the link to uh, Facebook? So I can get some information from the Facebook account. And now I've got this, I can assign this list to myself or someone else on the team. I'm gonna assign it now in the business class, you can do that. In my case, I'm already on this as a member. I know I'm working on this. I can then work on and keep going. The beauty of these topic lists or these checklists is that once you've done a checklist, you can use this checklist on others. So if you've got a standard checklist for all the things you need to ask in a briefing call um, to a client, then what you can do is just simply add a checklist that already exists. I'll show you a bit of an example of that. Let's um, pop Marika's card over here. We're done with that. And I'm going to go over to the start of the planning for ABC social media campaign. Open this up, same thing, checklist. I can copy the items from another checklist, like topics. And it will copy across that exact checklist into this new card, which is gonna save a ton of time when you've got standard checklists that you wanna work with. It'll also show you on the card here, how many of those checklist items have been done. So if I pop in and go and I've gone, I've got, I know what the logo is, I know what the colors are, I cross them off. As I close my card, now I can see that two out of five things have now been handled. So it's a really efficient way, a really quick way of being able to very, very easily work around what can be a complex task of managing these things. Now, of course, once I've done that and it's all done, I'll fill out all that story. I can add notes. So let's go mark them all off. I can add a more detailed description, but what I'm most likely gonna do is pop in here and leave some notes and say, Marika was really happy that we called. I have the brief ready to go to the developers. And I might wanna attach the brief there. So I can pick up a document. Let's just say it's uh, this particular, it can be a picture, it can be a report, a PDF, a, a Word file. I can open that up and load it up. Now the idea is it leaves a link in there so people can get to it later. Save that and see it becomes a link. I can click on that and open up that particular item or that report. Now this can be a really good way of running really simple projects or managing you know, details and uh, the kind of contacts you have with a client. It's not necessarily a customer relationship management system. Uh, it's more of a workflow management system because now I've worked on this, I've done it, dropping over to done and it's done. Then I'll pick up the washing. I'm now going to pick up the washing. Once I've picked up that washing and I've done it, I can just simply just drag it over there. I've done that now too. So the rewarding thing about Trello and the reason why I guess it becomes so popular is because you literally are rewarding yourself by just moving things from a big task list to what I'm working on right now, to absolutely done. It works best when you work on one thing at a time, but it's also in my case where I've got a lot of things going on and a lot of projects at a time, I may have a task list over here of 35 items and I might be working on five things at the same time, but I can track those as I'm working onto them and eventually kick one over to done, at which point that I can go, okay, I've got the capability of working on five things in one day, or I can, just have something which is parked in something for me. So I can add another list and say, um, projects by Dante, put that in there and I can put in Marika there. So it's not in the doing list of anyone in particular, it's owned specifically by me. Cause then I can also have another list is projects by Carol and Carol's list of projects is gonna be in there. 
And then as she finishes, she goes done. So this then allows me to have visibility of the individual things that people are doing in the team rather than just going, the whole team has a doing one. I can get rid of that one, archive list, and then just work on these new ones, moving things backwards and forwards between them. Now there's many, many more features that are locked into Trello. A lot of these features are gonna be tied to the business class accounts where you've got um, a lot of scope for automating stuff, a lot of scope for going way beyond just these basics of to-do doing done. What you'll probably do is try out at this level, this free level and see how you go. Now you can have multiple boards. They set up to five on the free account. So I'm not gonna start on there. I'm gonna start a new board. So I go boards. There's the one I'm working on now. I can create a new board and I can do the whole process again, this time with a blue background. I'm gonna call it blue projects. And then I've got a new board. I can go backwards and forwards between my boards for different things. Back to green, back to blue. And I start the whole process again. Now I'm given a, an inbox of sorts, like an activity field. So here's a, all the boards that I've got available to me. I can also go and look at what my notifications are that are for me. So I can view all the notifications of what's been going on. I've got nothing at the moment because no one's mentioned me. No one's actually tagged me anything. I haven't had to action anything. It's a really easy, simple way of working on tasks, going from to do, doing and done. Now, some of the boards I've had before are much, much more complicated than this. And uh, they've got lots of moving parts in them and lots of, we've used them for storing documents. We've used them for storing logos for clients or we have a board just for a client. It can get remarkably complex or it can be just as simple as this. If you're a graphic designer working on your own or if you're a freelancer, this can be a really good opportunity for you to have the most simple solution absolutely positive possible. So that's in a nutshell, how Trello works. The next option we're gonna look at, and if, oh, if anyone's got a question about Trello, they'd like to throw in, please do put it in the Q&A or in the chat window. The Q&A is probably easier for me to see because it will pop up in front of me. So pop it in the Q&A, I can answer those for you. But I think Trello is the one that people tend to understand very simply and easily. It's like a task list. You just move things across the columns when you finish those things. Got a Q&A coming up here for Jackie. Um, I wasn't sure if it was for free or $10 a month at basic level. It is free at the basic level, Jackie. So you get five boards, um, it is free. So what happens when you go through the sign up process, it's gonna ask you to put in a credit card. Um, you say, no, I don't wanna do this. It'll have a little gray box at the bottom of the credit card field that says continue without, um, without going business class, without the free trial. And then it'll just give you the version I've got here, which is the free version. So it's definitely worth having a look at and will help get those people who are very disorganized a lot more organized. Now, those of us who have graduated past Trello, we might want something that's a little bit more, I guess, elegant maybe. Um, oh, wait a minute, I've got another question here in the chat. Let me quickly pop in. That was Jackie. Um, we've got Asana. Now, Asana, a very different layout. Asana is very much a project management tool. So yes, the same thing, it's task management, but it works on a lot more of a, um, I guess a dashboard model. So in this front, I'll have a dashboard saying what my tasks are that are due soon. What the recent projects I've worked on. Oh, excuse me, I can set myself goals. I can set myself tasks and I've got a whole team that I can work on. So let's just say in one of the teams I'm working with, which is my sales pipeline, I can pop in here and set myself tasks in much the same way I could do with Trello. You got the board layout, so the to do in progress or done or to do doing and done. But you can also look at a list of tasks. If you work with lists better than what you work with say boards like this, your list can be, okay, task number one is contact Marika to get a brief for her new website. Second task could be pick up the dry cleaning. Um, call ABC, uh, get, uh, get back in there. Next one uh, is get brief for social media campaign from ABC. I'm not even gonna correct those spelling errors. So I'll just have to live with them. Yes, I, I can't do it. My OCD just cannot let me do it. So what I can do is use a list, list style. So it said when I do my task number one, which I don't actually have a task number one, so I wanna get rid of that one. 
I can mark them off like this and that gets rid of them. Or I can go, okay, I've done this one. I'm going to move it into the in progress. So I'm actually starting to work on this. So if you work better with this kind of list, that might be something that you prefer to do rather than working in the board, which it also has. I can have Marika going into done, back to here, playing around with it, adding people to it. Look, I'm going to put myself in there. I can add a due date to that task. Let's say it's on the 15th, 19th. Or I can set a date range for it. I can also go into this card and it gives me, similar to Trello, perhaps with a little bit more of an elegant layout, the ability to give it a project that I want to assign it to, set it as where I want it to be. Remember, to do, pro in progress and done, to do, doing and done. I can allocate that there. And within each task, I can set subtasks. In the same way you can do those checklists that we did in Trello, you've got the same opportunity here to do something a little bit different. Um, this is a really, <laughs> maybe if, uh, Jackie's just asked, which is the cheapest and the easiest, oh, sorry, which is the easiest to use and free? Look, I'd have to say Trello. I'm starting off with the least complex thing and ending with the most complex. So Trello is probably the uh, easiest to use and it is free for you to use at the level that I think that you would use, Jackie. Um, I can collaborate with other people, add other people in there. So other people in my team. So then I'm able to do something which is actually a lot more, um, you know, a lot more of a team task. And then I can add notes along the way. I can ask a question or post an update, add a file in there as well. There's emojis. I can mention someone if I want to mention someone in there. Mention, say, uh, Lachlan, who used to work for us. And then he will be notified in his notifications that he's got a message in this particular card to action. Lachlan, can you please look at this? Comment, and it goes into the record of this particular card. So it's perhaps a little bit more of an elegant way of looking at it than it is for, um, than it is for Trello. Uh, it's certainly a lot more complex. It's like for instance, I can look at a timeline and it's telling me now this thing is like a, a premium thing. So I'm not gonna get the premium thing in here. You have to pay for that level. The calendar view is probably one you may use, which will show me what's going on on different sites. So I set that particular task to contact Marika to get the brief for her new website. I did that through the list, but it's also now showing me on a calendar what my tasks are and when they're due. So if you're a calendar person, which a lot of us are, I live and die in my Google calendar. It's crazy. When I take a look at my, um, I just want to show off my Google calendar. That's my Google calendar. This is what it looks like. God help me next week. That's a mess. <laughs> Back to the topic. So in Asana, we can have that same kind of thing. And then you can sync this with your Google calendar, sync it with your uh, Outlook calendar. And at this level, it is free. You can have a dashboard then for this particular sales pipeline, which gives you all this information. But again, this is the stuff that comes with premium levels. The messages that you send, you can message other people who are connected to this. You can even have forms through the paid version that people fill out forms on your website and it populates as tasks in Asana. Trello has a similar thing where you've got um, an email to board. So people fill out a form and it has a um, action at the end that when they submit that form on your website, it then goes through to form a task with all those, for, all those files filled out and populated into a Trello board onto the to-do list. Similar thing here, um, but the Trello way of doing it's free. The Asano one, you'll have to actually pay for. And you can have files added to your, like all the attachments that are part of this particular project will appear in here as well. So it's a lot more of a complete tool. Um, it's a lot more of a, a place where you can see like overviews and dashboards. You can choose the way you want to use it. If you're a list person, use the list. If you're a board person, use the board. You know, remove Marika over here, pick up the dry cleaning is done over here. So I've got the same as Trello, not quite as maybe you know, you've got cover images you can use or cover, they have cover images rather than using cover colors. Um, or if you're more of a timeline or calendar person, then you've got a calendar view in there as well. That's a nice, very, very basic look of it. So that's not a, like something which um, you go into a lot of depth. Asana does a lot of things. I can look at my tasks that are being set for me. See, contact Marika. So I've got a dashboard through here. I've got an inbox, which is full of the messages I've sent backwards and forwards between my team. So if you're in a team that uses messaging services like Slack or anything like that, this will then bring it all within Asana so people can actually message each other within the app. 
And this way they're staying on top of the process rather than having to jump between email and messages on here and Slack over there and WhatsApp over there and wherever they wanna do their messaging, keeping it within the Asana app means you're going to have the option to keep a very tidy record of all this. It's gonna appear on this one place and you're gonna be able to quickly and easily link to things that are in Asana. So the tasks that are in here. So if I message someone, it will appear in their list in their inbox. Your portfolios are more of a business class thing as well as are the goals. Setting self goals is where you might wanna say, okay, I want to deal with all incoming things within 24 hours and that's a goal I wanna have. These are paid things that you can upgrade to for to be a bit more of an enterprise level um, task management tool. But for you, for me, for most of us, we're not gonna really get past those very basic things of you know, what we're gonna use this for, which is basically to do, doing and done. And of course, so, you know, looking at what your tasks are, maybe some messaging, that could be a really powerful thing for you, um, particularly if you're trying to talk to other people in your organization and have one source of truth for all your messaging and where it goes to. I certainly am, am becoming less reliant upon email as the years go by because I wanna get things in a place where it integrates with systems like this. Now I have used Trello and I graduated one day to use Asana. I've now graduated out of Asana because there was other things I wanted to do in other systems. And one of those systems that I did graduate through to is the third one we're gonna to feature today, which is ClickUp. Now ClickUp, unlike Asana and Trello, is also a customer relationship management tool One of the things they're really, really good at doing is being able to import stuff from other systems. So if you've been using Trello in the past, if you've been using Asana in the past, they've got tools which will allow you to import all your stuff into here to use it. Now, why would you need to use something which is both a customer relationship management system and also a workflow management system? I would say because when you're doing workflow and you're tracking workflow, it's always because you're working with a client, right? You've got a customer you're working with. So ClickUp brings those two things together and they do have a free level. Let's take a look at what that is. Um, I, I begin to love ClickUp a lot. It's becoming one of those things where I'm glad I've done it. So the free version of ClickUp, which is free forever and there's no pressure for you to upgrade to anything beyond what you're currently on, gives you a certain amount of storage unlimited members, unlimited tasks, and the security of, of two-factor authentication. But once you want to go a bit higher, they've got monthly and annually rates. So 1166 per member. So this is where it starts to get a bit pricey. If you've got multiple people in your team, that becomes two of that, or two of that, if you're going to pay it in an annual block. Who you got? a lot more integrations that are built into the system. So integrating into Google Calendar, integrating into your Outlook email, for instance, you can create customized dashboards that allow you to see the information the way you wanna see it. And you can then have unlimited, what they call lists, boards, and calendar views. Same thing we saw in, um, in Asana, that you can actually view it. If you're a list person, you can do the list. If you're a calendar person, you do the calendar. And this lets you have lots of different views for lots of different boards and lots of different activities going in there. You can also do the same as Asana. You can set goals, portfolios, and you can have custom fields. What custom fields allows you to do is to create a lot more records that are not just the basics of to-do, doing, and done, but you can add a lot more detail into that. So you can say to-do, but addressed, to do, but put off until next month, that sort of thing. And then the other way to look at it is that you've got um, the additional parts of it. So they've got more product. They've got products that actually help you to manage customers as well. So in here, you can see they've got set up for remote work for those of us who work um, remotely from hotel rooms in Alice Springs, for instance, at the moment, um, people who are working in a sales process. So if you're working in a sales process, you have a very different requirement than someone who's working just in developing software websites or getting something from a painting that's been commissioned, painting that's being done to a painting that's now being delivered to someone. 
This is where these come in particularly handy because they do allow you to track those real world processes. So if you're doing some e-commerce, so let's say you're selling um, pieces of art that are being commissioned, you can have in the first column, the inquiry that's come in. The second column is um, a brief has been taken. So third column can be that you have got yourself, um, it's been sent to the artist. Fourth column is it's been sent back to you and it's ready for shipping. And the fifth column could be, okay, you know what? I'm now ready to send this out to, um, it's now shipped and it's on its way. And then once you've got um, some examples of uh, that the, the shipping actually worked and the customer actually got it, you've made that call, then you're able to put that off archived as done. So you've got a record of all your done things down one side. Now that can be done in Trello. That can be done in Asana. That can be done here as well. With ClickUp, the difference is that it's a little bit more colorful, a little bit more simple when it comes over here with your notifications. So you can still see your notifications. So you can see what's new, what's being cleared. Even if you cleared things out, you can see the list of what's being cleared. Now I haven't done any in here because this is just a sample one. I can then create spaces. So my first space can be client space and I can look at my client list or I can have a project space that's a list of projects. So a client list, here they all are. I can assign a client to a person, set a priority for it and set a lead stage. Now this is where ClickUp starts to set itself apart from Asana and from Trello is you can actually set up a lead board in here. So when things are coming in from a, a form on your website, for instance, it can fill out as a client here within ClickUp. And then you manage that process by going, okay, Alex is a lead, hasn't been assigned yet. Let me assign it to someone. Oh, look, I'll assign it to me. Is it a high priority? Not really. The estimated value that we've put on here is a, it could be a $50,000 job. How confident am I that I'm going to make this money? Well, I know Alex. He was on fire. I'm going to put that I'm absolutely confident that he's absolutely going to come through with the goods. Here's his contact details for anyone is part of this and a bit of information about his company and when I last updated this lot. Now, what I can also do is go into Alex's record and in here, I can start putting in a description. I can say, Alex is someone who I met at the Tourism Top End um, meeting last month. Uh, we were talking about the idea of blah, blah, blah. This is where you actually provide the context for who Alex is. I can then set tasks within Alex. So Alex as my client now has a card, which is specifically for him. You can replace Alex's name with being a company name, for instance. And that company name could be, let's change Alex through to, um, we're working with um, Alex's wardrobes. So in Alex's wardrobes, we know that this is him. We know what his email address, we know their estimated value of this account could be. We've staged him to the point where we've said, yes, he's qualified to be a, a good lead. I've got a lot of confidence I'm gonna be able to sell this thing. So now I can set myself some tasks. First task I'm gonna do is organize a discovery call with Alex to see what he wants. Now, once I've done these um, subtasks, I can export these and have these as a template for all of the activities I wanna do. So once I've got that one, it's in. I can set another subtask which is going to be, let's just say, um, book meeting room and catering. I'm going all out for this guy, I'm, I'm confident. Book meeting room and catering for Alex. Uh, remember that he needs gluten-free stuff. So I can put all those little notes in there. Now, if I'm working with a virtual assistant or a real life assistant or another staff member, they can see these. They are able to see the points that I've handed in there so nothing's getting missed. There's also a, an activity list over here. This is the activities of what I've done and saved in this particular account. I can then add a checklist just like you can do on Trello. So a checklist could be, um, oops, I've got the two checklists. I just want the first one, thank you. Delete that one. My first checklist can be, okay, number one, um, I wanna call this one task, uh, not task, I wanna say um, catering. So in the catering, I wanna go, Something like um, I've organized the catering. I have booked follow-up. Uh, next one could be uh, attend follow-up. Present proposal. So I've got a, like a little checklist of the tasks I'm gonna do as part of the sales pipeline to deal with Alex. So I'll pop out of Alex. I'm now done with him. Close that window. So in Alex's wardrobes now, 
I can see I've got a checklist going. Zero out of four has been done. I can play with Alex's name a bit. Or what I can do now is go, okay, I have now done the catering, booked the follow-up. See, it's marking them off. And now I've got to attend the follow-up. Now, he's now moved before, between a lead. He's now definitely more than a lead. Here's an opportunity. So I'm going to drag him down into opportunity. So once Alex is in there, come on, dude, come across here. He's now gone to the wrong place. Come on, I want to move you. I'll put him down to proposal. So that's the stage. Now, there's a lot of automations that can happen in here that you can, should be able to move these into different type, uh, different areas. I'm trying to move him down. He just won't move down there. So it's got a, an automation has been set up, which is stopping me from moving Alex into this particular list. Normally, that would do it. Drag and drop seems to be disabled for some reason. Uh, please disable the sorting. To, oh, okay, because I've got the task sorted. <laughs> Let's not group them then. So we go list by status. We're just going to go filter. Uh, turn that off. And now I can move things around. So Alex, I can take from the lead and put into an opportunity. There we go. Nope, still not doing it. Ugh, I, it's just one of those little buggy things that I need to do that I've got it saved in a particular order, the way this particular one's been set up. So in the case of Alex's wardrobes, what you normally do is move them around depending upon a stage that they're in. So then automation, if I had the paid version, I could set it to the negotiations. It would turn it into an opportunity. If I was then to move him into its um, handoff to success means that it's now been won. That should then, if there's an automation in place, take Alex's wardrobe up into the one list. So that then puts him in, into my accounts who will be notified that they need to now send out the first invoice. So when this works, for some reason I've got it set in a way that's not gonna work, but normally when it works, this is really, really elegant and it helps you move around very easily from sales stuff to just tasks. Now, this is a space for clients. I can set up a space for getting things done. My new list is going to be something. Like, let's actually look at some of the templates that are available because there might be something in there that I need that's already been created. So I go to the template center. I can browse the templates and let's see what they've got. They've got task management, which is really simple, just like Trello. Let's, let's grab that. So you can use this template. It's not a paid one. It's all good. It's got things like status groups, custom fields and view types. Well, I don't know what any of that means. So let's use that template. So we're gonna call it in a folder, which is uh, tasks in the space, um, it is a space. We're gonna put in the list of our spaces. Uh, do we import everything? Yeah, let's just import everything. Let's just use this thing and see what it does. So I'm gonna apply it and it's now got a task list. So I can start tasks as like task one, oops. There you go, it's still importing. So it's, it's put in all of the tasks that I've got on this particular campaign or this particular, um, uh, this is like a sample one. So it's got design new logos, write feature blog posts, all that sort of stuff. And you can set statuses for everything. So this, like I said, this is a massive step up from Asana and from Trello because you've got a full custom designed set of templates you can set out that allow you to set statuses, assign to departments, track the progress of each task getting done. It's crazy the amount of stuff you can actually achieve in here. Uh, one of the things I really do like is that in terms of the people you've got, including yourself, you can see what your workload is. And here's the workload one. You do need the paid one to do it, but when you have it, it will show you if I've got 20 hours a week to work on this particular client, um, it will show me that I've currently got 24 hours of work according to my estimates that has been assigned to me this week and that I've, I'm overworked. So I can then start to look at offloading that extra two hours, which is really not great for me. I can also see my timeline, which is just like the timeline you got in there. The difference between this and Asana is that timeline is included and you can add a new view such as a calendar. So I'm gonna add the calendar view and if I'm more of a calendar person, now I've got the calendar view, which will show my tasks. If I had set um, due dates to those particular tasks. So if you're a list person, you've got your list. If you're a board person, you've got your board. Look at that, just like Trello. Or if you're a calendar person, then we look at the calendar view. 
So I was to get, say, one of these and set a due date for it. So I've got due dates in here. It's just, um, they're back in 2019. So they're a very long time ago. They're old. It's a while since I've used this. So I'm going to set myself to next weekend to do this. And it should then populate a due date into my calendar. So I'm still looking for it. There you go. Set up Google Analytics funnel. It's set actually a project in there showing how much time I need to work on it. So I know that's part of my calendar of work to be doing. Uh, just like Asana, and this is ClickUp is very, very similar to Asana in so many ways. They've got these documents here, which is all the uploaded documents you'll have. So um, it can be PDFs, Word files, Microsoft uh, PowerPoint, Google Docs, all of those can be all uploaded from there, including things like invoices, whatever it is in terms of documents. The idea is to get it out of your email where it can be deleted and lost very easily to so getting in a system like this, where you're keeping a record of all these things. And when you put a document up there, you explain what it's for, what client it was for and what the purpose of it may have been too. So there's context around it. And that's what these systems give you for your task management is context, not just here's a file like Google, um, Google Docs will do. Yeah, I've got a bunch of files. That's great. Well, there's a, what does it all mean? These allow you to load them up and give context by putting notes against it. So this file was given to me by Marika when we first had our discovery call. Great, I've got context about it. When someone goes in there, looks for everything to do with Marika, they say, and someone says, oh, she gave me this file back when I first met her. I'm pretty sure I loaded it up into ClickUp. They go in there, they look for that file and lo and behold, it's there ready to be found. So that's what these systems give you is some kind of reassurance, a place to put all the files, a place to put all the contacts, all the notes. So the next person who speaks to Marika or speaks to Alex can see the context of what's happened along the way. ClickUp is one that I'm really, really happy with. And I'm currently onboarding um, a lot of my stuff that was previously in Asana into ClickUp. But I'm also, because I work with multiple contracts and work with multiple different clients that I do work for, I'm also using another system called monday.com monday.com if you ever listen to um, a lot of podcasts monday.com is going to be really useful for this um, julie just mentioned she's used hubspot in the past for crm and ClickUp seems much more user friendly though for small businesses oh god yes it is so much easier to use than hubspot hubspot was built a very long time ago and it's become very clunky and over the top and once you get past that free level of hubspot it gets really super expensive um, to the point where if you're scaling your business up like I've tended to do in the past, um, I outgrow it very, very quickly, um, the free version at least, and I have to pay a lot more. So yeah, really well brought up, Julie. HubSpot is one of those customer relationship management systems that is used by so many companies. It's really good. Like it's really, really good, but it's an overkill for what most people do. Now, let's have a look then at monday.com. Monday.com, again, really friendly interface, really simple to sort of make your way around. But one of the great things I have about Monday.com is that I want to set up a new board. Let's just say I'll go back out to the front, look at what all my main workspace is, and I go, I'm going to add a new board. I'm going to call this my um, marketing board. What it will allow me to do is, yep, do that board. But then I might want to do things like turn this into something that's got like some sort of template in it. So again, I can group my things into um, sales process. This can be um, the development process. And I can add like another one, another group. And that group can be um, handover process. So if they're the three major processes that happen in my business, they're the three major things that happen. Now I can actually move these. So pick that up and drag it down here. A bit easy to drag these around usually. No, nope, come on, you can do it. Up you go. Drag the group up here. There we go. Sales, development's my second one. And then I've got my handover process. So it looks, looks at really like good. This can be my task number one. Now I can assign a person to it myself. I assign myself to all of these. I can set where each one of these are at. So I'm either working on it, stuck or done, or I might have a different status. My status, this little pink one could be um, with client. And quite often, like you'll go, I'm working on it, but it's actually not you that's the problem. It's the client not getting back to you. So I can go with client. So I can tell that actually the client has been contacted. I'm just waiting for them to come back to me. So you can have your own statuses that you're updating there. You can set yourself a, like a date. This is the date where it went in. 
or you can set even something like a due date. I can say a due date, so I've got a date, and go due. And so I've got to have this all done by February 25 for this one. It then lets me set a reminder that will pop out and say, hey, you got this thing due, mate. And it's going to pop up in my home screen when I need to get stuff done. Now, what I can do with item one is that when I've done it, mark it off, it'll say, okay, you've done this. I can move it to the next group, which is the development process. So item one here, let's give item one a name so it's a bit easier to talk about. And um, we're going to put this Alex's wardrobe, um, Alex's wardrobes marketing. So once I've done that, you can see it in there. I can also not have to just move it like that way. I can just pick this item up and put it into the handover process or kick it back to the sales process if I need to. Change my status. Now, one thing that, um, uh, that, um, that these guys do really, really well is I can set one of these status changes. If I go that it's with client, I can have it make you go to a list in here, a group in here that says with client. Or I can say, you know what, I'm going to do the done. When I do done, I want it to not appear on this at all. I want it to still be in the system, but I want it archived. If it's done, I need to get it out of my view. I don't want to see it again. Or you can have another board in here that's set up for this particular task to go into done where you can see every single done thing that everyone's ever done. That's a lot of done. And then I can always search for stuff in here. So let's just say I'm lost back out in other ones. So we're going positive canine behavior but we're doing some work for them. I can go search for Alex. Is there a mention of Alex? Alex's wardrobes marketing, here it is. It's got a great little thing. I can then operate on that, pop out, done my thing, write an update. Oh yeah, it's this is done. Update it and get out. Now, my updates don't have to be just text. If I click in here, I've got the option to do things like checklists, bullet points, all that sort of stuff. Checklists are great because I can put them in here as a task within Alex's stuff. So it'd be task one, task two, task three, task four, update. And so when someone wants to work on this and they go, okay, I'm working on Alex's, I've done task one, great, that's done. And then in Alex's, I can see there's, uh, let me hop out of here, but in Alex's record, I can now see there's two items have been added to. I can pop into those items that opens up and says, yep, here we go. There's these tasks that are being worked on. Two, three, and four, all done. And because we're very um, socially oriented these days, I'm going to go, that I like that. I like that Alex's stuff was done. Now, just like, um, just like Asana and ClickUp, we can actually have an additional view. So at the moment, we're just looking, I'll go into a view of this particular board. So I'll look at, let's say, the marketing board for Alex. I can view this differently. I don't have to view this as a table. I can view it as a timeline. So with due dates showing up, that's um, what they call a Gantt chart. If you're a project management guru, you might be very comfortable with a Gantt chart or you may want to add a different view such as a calendar, an actual Gantt chart, which is very much different. Or if you're someone who likes to work in a Trello kind of way, that's called a Kanban. So Kanban is the name for what Trello's board is, the to-do doing done sort of thing. So notice how it's picked up. If I go back to my list, my main table, these statuses stuck with client. Let's put that one in done. Let's put that one in working on it. If I go now to my board, my Kanban, I've now got those different statuses so I can see in one view where everything is at. So it's really kind of like a powerful way to look at where you are working on and to view it in the way that suits what information you want to bring forward. If I want to see where my team is at, what's stuck, because that's my job is to get things unstuck. Well, then I can just go straight to the Kanban for that particular board and see what's stuck. Or if I'm the workflow, I'm the project manager, I'm mostly concerned with the timeline. I want to see that things are going to their timelines. Or if I just want to see what there is that's going on in there, I can do that too. I can see everything that's happening all in this one board. And just like Trello, I can have multiple boards, as many as I like in here. 
I got one with you know participants in a program. I got the positive canine behavior leads in quotes. Now, what I'm doing with uh, Monday.com is that I did go briefly into ClickUp. I'm going to use that for a segment of my business. I'm then going to use Monday.com to handle a different segment of my business because the different styles of how they're used and what I need to integrate them in with is really important for me to use particular systems. Now, my work I do with Treaty Business Consulting, they use Monday.com and use it very thoroughly and very, very well. They've got, a, I won't take you in because that's breach of privacy, obviously, but they've got a very complex setup that they're managing everything they do because to them, they have to track every step they take with every client to ensure the client gets the best possible service. Now with me, I'm following their path with particular parts of my business, but for others, I'm finding that ClickUp is gonna be the way that I wanna do because it accepts a lot of really good stuff coming in as a sort of a sales lead management board. But there is yet another part of my business that really wants to use Trello. So depending on who the teams are I'm using and which business I'm working on, I can use multiple ones for the most basic stuff. So for my web developers, I use Trello because they want the most simple possible project management tool they can get. They love Trello, they're used to it, they're really good with working with it. I find that a lot of marketing people, if they've got tasks, like to work with Asana. It's quite elegant, it's quite neutral looking, and they don't feel like it's too cluttered and they get this tasks due soon and a dashboard that gives them a very good idea of where they're at and what they're doing. ClickUp is really, really popular with people who are in a very um, lead generation oriented space. So if they're um, coaches, for instance, people doing coaching stuff, they'll quite often use ClickUp because it does have templates that are already set up. So we saw our spaces before. We saw um, the task was set up, the clients list. We can see in the clients list is set up in such a way with templates that make it really super simple to track the sales that are coming through or the leads that are coming through and moving them off if you don't lock off your board like I did before, you can very easily move people through those uh, those tar those those stages as well. ClickUp is probably um and as um, I think Judith brought it up before, very much like the HubSpot approach, but so much neater and tidier and much more user friendly to be able to do. But it works in the same way. You can have emails coming in to notify to fill out a lead, just like we've got Alex's wardrobes here, or you can have a form that's set out. That, that there's a form that's embedded in your website that collects the leads and brings them into ClickUp as well. And also with ClickUp being free to start with, it's a great way to start off with, with, with building yourself a, a simple system that works for you or a complex system even that works for you. Having these different kind of views as well. Here's the board we saw before for ClickUp. The table, which if you're a table view, I wouldn't even know what to use the table view for. To me, that's like really a way to, I guess, sort things. So you can sort things into say the email addresses, but probably more likely the confidence levels. You can go, I wanna sort by confidence. Then I'm gonna see, okay, the people are sorted by two of confidence or like to go, I wanna see say for instance, confidence on top of priority. And it shows me then the confidence level where I'm most confident, where I'm least confident which might be a way of me saying, all right, someone needs to work on Tyler because we need to move that up to a higher level of confidence. So there's so many different varieties of things you can do with these systems. Um, if I had to call a favorite, I'd probably have to say it at the moment it's monday.com because to me, it's just a very, very simple system to use, but it can be a lot, lot more uh, complicated if you need it to be. Um, you can set up different boards over here that have completely different structures. My leads and quotes, for instance, is completely different to my marketing board, which is completely different to my niece participants board, which is completely different to a specific client that I might be working with and the board that they're working with. And then of course there's notifications along the way, or you can look at your inbox in the same way that you had an inbox for Asana, where people can message each other between things and click up the same thing. You can also message within here by just doing at mentions like you do on um, Twitter or on Instagram, for instance. So there's so many ways around now. Uh, Monday, their plans are based upon these Australian dollar amounts. Another consideration you may need to make though is where the data lives for all these. If you're working with military contracts, yeah, there's certain data repatriation laws that if the data does not live in Australia, you cannot work on military contracts. You may find the same thing with a lot of federal government contracts 
If you're working on a federal government contract, the data doesn't live in Australia, you can't use it now. Um, Monday.com is actually an Israeli company. They're from Israel. Uh, ClickUp, I, I wanna say it's American, but I'm pretty sure it is. Asana is also American. Trello um, is owned by an Australian company, but at your level as a free user, you're not going to get the option to tell them where to actually have that data stored. At the moment, Trello was actually an American tool that's been bought by an Australian company. Their data actually lives in America. So none of these are going to be very helpful for you when it comes to data repatriation. But there are other systems that you can use that have the data stored within Australia. For now though, you and I, freelancers, small businesses, we don't need to worry about those things really. We can use the system that works in the way that we want it to work to do the thing that we want to achieve. Super, super simple. Start with Trello. It's a great tool. It's going to take you a while to outgrow it, especially at the free level. Asana, if you really like a dashboard approach that gives you a good solid place to go into every morning where you go, this is what I need to do today. Let's go and do it. Click up, particularly useful if you have sales pipelines and leads coming in where you want to be able to manage leads and then have a record against a client record as opposed to a task record. Monday.com is if you want to do just about any of these things, there is a, a kind of a template, I suppose, that would work for any single thing you want to do. So if I wanted to set up a new workspace, a new board, I can do that, but it allows me then to choose a template. So choose from templates, I've got a few there, an editorial calendar if I'm writing for a magazine. Um, there's lots of them. Sales and CRM, they do do some sales and CRM, which will give you things that automatically work for that. If you're a freelancer, it's got a set out for you. If you're a real estate agent, there's set outs that work for you. If you're a startup, if you're doing manufacturing, if you're doing um, sales, so let's just say um, something in construction, there's even layouts that work for you. They can preview what they look like and see, oh yeah, those are the kind of things I want. They're working out budgets and timelines. That works for me as well. So you can use those templates all for free as a free user. Um, and ClickUp has a lot of templates for that too, but not quite to the same level that Monday does. So which one are you gonna use? That is completely up to you and what's gonna work for you. So have you got any questions to fire up? Please fire them up now. Um, if you'd like some sort of um, ideas of a particular uh, application that you have that you would use one of these systems for, I'll be glad to give you my advice and I guess my um, background of how I've used these tools before and how that might be able to sort of give you some context for how you might use it for yourself. I think we gave an example before which really suits Jackie, but you may have an example of your own. You want to go, hey, this is something I really want to do. Or if you want to go so far as to say, you know what, I want to book in a time with you, Dante, or Crystal, who's very good at this, or many of the others who work in CRMs and in this um, in WA, Queensland, and the Northern Territory, you can look for someone on the ASBAS Digital Solutions Program who can do a one-to-one -one session for you. And if you've never had a one-to-one -one session, your first one is free. Second one, 44 bucks. Any after that, 66. It's a lot more uh, subsidized than what you get if you're paying us our full rate for it. Trust me, it's a lot more than that. So have a go, see if there's something, do a free trial. And if you get stuck, use an ASBAS Digital Solutions one-to-one um, -one, and you'll be able to do that. So thank you for taking part this evening. I know it's a bit hard to do it after work hours when you go, oh, I'm tired, I wanna finish. What I wanna say to you is thank you for taking time to work on your business, not just working in your business. Have a great night. And I hope to see you in another one of these sessions really, really soon.